Robert M. Gagne was an American educational psychologist best known for his works Conditions of Learning, which identified the mental conditions of learning and was published in 1965. Gagne was born in 1916 in North Andover, Maine, the New England region of the Northeastern United States, and passed in 2002. Gagne earned his PhD in psychology from Brown University in 1940. He worked as a professor in different universities and also served as director of the U.S. Air Force Perceptual and Motor Skill Laboratory, where he developed his principles of learning theory. He is considered to be a major contributor to the systematic approach of instructional design. He went on to develop a series of studies and works that simplified and explained good instruction. Gagne was also involved in applying concepts of instructional theory to the design of computer-based training and multimedia-based learning. In 1956, he proposed a system of classifying different types of learning in terms of the degree of complexity of the mental processes involved. He identified eight basic types and arranged these in a hierarchy. According to Gagne, the higher orders of learning in this hierarchy build upon the lower levels requiring progressively greater amounts of previous learning to their success. The lowest four orders tend to focus on the more behavioral aspects of learning, while the highest four focus on the more cognitive aspects. Then we go to a detailed study of Gagne's hierarchy of learning. Signal learning is the simplest form of learning and consists essentially of the classical conditioning first described by the behavioral psychologist Pavlov. The learner is conditioned to produce a desired or involuntary response as a result of a stimulus that would not normally produce that response. For example, salivation at the sound of a bell. In here, salivation is conditioned and bell is stimulus. The applications of classical conditioning in facilitating human learning are, however, very limited. Stimulus response learning is also known as operant conditioning was originally developed by Skinner. It involves developing desired stimulus response bonds in the subject through a carefully planned reinforcement schedule based on the use of rewards and punishments. This type of learning can occur when the instructor praises the learner for deeper thinking or provides constructive criticism during reflection or debriefing. Chaining is a more advanced form of learning in which the subject develops the ability to connect two or more previously learned stimulus response bonds into a linked sequence. It is the process whereby most complex psychomotor skills are learned, for an example, riding a bicycle or playing the piano. Verbal association occurs when the learner makes associations using verbal connections. Verbal association is one of the key processes in the development of language skills. The fifth step, discrimination learning, involves developing the ability to make appropriate or different responses to a series of similar stimuli that differ in a systematic way. The process is made more complex and hence more difficult by the phenomenon of interference, whereby one piece of learning inhibits another. Interference is thought to be one of the main causes of forgetting. Concept learning, the sixth level involves developing the ability to make a consistent response to different stimuli that form a common class or category of some sort. It is the process in which the learner learns how to organize learning in a systematic structure and foster deeper learning. It forms the basis of the ability to generalize, classify, etc. The seventh level, rule learning is a very high level cognitive process that involves being able to learn relationships between concepts and apply these relationships in different situations, including situations not previously encountered. It forms the basis of the learning of general rules, procedures, etc. Problem solving is the highest level of cognitive process according to Gagne. It involves developing the ability to invent a complex rule, algorithm or procedure for the purpose of solving one particular problem and then using the method to solve other problems of a similar nature. Then we go to the educational implications of Gani's learning hierarchy. The hierarchy is useful in teaching. 1. 
develop the teacher select appropriate teaching technique two to help the teacher select suitable content or unit for teaching three to help the teacher decide what lower behaviors or subordinate skills should be taught before teaching higher learning types four to help the teacher to break a complex task into component skills and teach those skills only that the students are lacking five textbooks can be produced on the basis of the task analysis of learning objectives ganis instructional events can produce an effective and comprehensive lesson plan for teaching procedural skills preparing learners with various preferred learning styles to perform psychomotor skills competently